Hey there, Joseph here, and uh, this is a new format I want to try out. This is actually my second recording of this format due to some issues with the first recording, uh, but I'm still excited to do it again. So basically what this is called, it's called Draw and Discuss. Um, I'm going to be drawing a picture in the background while discussing subjects that pique my interest. Um, these subjects really can range from anything at all. Um, it can range from games to movies, animation, um, anything that crosses my mind and I think that I want to talk about here. So, uh, let's get uh, started, shall we? So, today's uh, topic of discussion is going to be E3 and the games that were shown off there. A uh, bit of the list right here. So, E3 and the games that were shown off there. I'm, I'm, I'm a big gamer, I love games, and so let's just get started on discussion already. So for today's drawing, um, we're going to be drawing Link from Breath of the Wild, simply because that game still has yet to release my soul from its grasp, and with the DLC releasing this month, I don't think that grasp will be loosened anytime soon. Okay, so uh, let's get started off. So I'm not gonna be talking. I'm not gonna be talking too much about the actual conferences themselves. Um, I'm just gonna be talking more about the um, the games that were shown themselves. I'll mention the conferences and what I thought about them, but this is mostly about the the games. And if you see my, uh, I'm not drawing. If you see I'm not drawing, I'm probably adjusting something on my other screen, like maybe a reference photo or changing a song I'm listening to. Um, could be anything else like that. All right, well, let's let's get started. Okay, so let's uh, let's start off with some uh, with some Sony. So let's, with some with some Sony, I play a lot of PS4. So let's start with them. Um, so Sony had a pretty good conference overall. There wasn't a lot of talking in it; just game trailer after game trailer after game trailer. And as soon as you think they're done, another game trailer. Um, I know that that this wasn't the prefer. Some people didn't like that, but I enjoyed just the game trailers themselves. Alright, so first game, um, oh by the way, I got all the, I got this whole list of games from, I referenced an IGN article for this list of video games, so I'll link that down below, but let's, let's, get, let's get started on, on those games finally. Um, first game I want to talk about was, uh, Days Gone, you know, it's a, it's a zombie, it's not a zombie game. Um, it looks pretty similar to The Last of Us, however, you know, you can ride a motorcycle apparently. Um, it looks like it's going to be a really linear story-based game, and I don't mind that. I actually really enjoy story-based games. I think they can be really good when done right. And so far, Days Gone, I wasn't that interested in it at first. However, um, after the, the latest trailer and seeing some of the motorcycle stuff and seeing other things in the game, it, it did look a lot more appealing to me now, so I'll probably end up picking it up when it comes out. And although I do admit I wish that there would be some more variety with a lot of the AAA games coming out, uh, but what can you do? So next up, um, let's talk about um, God of War. Now, God of War, um, I did play all three of them as a kid, so I am... Um, at least a fan of the franchise. Not a really big fan. I wasn't itching for the return of Kratos. Uh, but it's really cool that it came back. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy right now about God of the new God of War game due to the seemingly sh change in genre. Um, it went from the hack and slash that was known being crazy, crazy violent. And again, it looks like it's going to be another very linear story-based progression kind of game. Where a lot of the enjoyments it's supposed to come from the characters and and the relations that they have. Oh wait, that needs to be fixed. Um, but if they can pull off the story well, I'll be very excited to play that game because I, again, I am a I am a, a fan of, of God of War, um, and I have enough hack and slashes to tie me over for now. I'm still playing Devil May Cry 4, as far as much as that is. And don't worry, we'll get to Devil May Cry later in this video. So, let's see, next up, um, we have, okay, so this next 
two games I'm going to talk about, they're going to be in their own kind of category for now. Because um, this mostly covers the Sony conference, um, but this is going to be its own subcategory. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite and Monster Hunter World are going to be two games we're going to discuss right now. Um, both for relatively similar reasons. Their relation to Devil May Cry, because that game is my favorite franchise of all time, Devil May Cry right there. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, I am a big fighting game fan. I absolutely love fighting games. I play, I pretty much play them all. I'm um, a cut for some of the older ones, like the original Darkstalkers. Um, but I played a lot of fighting games, and so Marvel's Capcom Infinite. Th there's there's no way to get around it. The game visually looks bad. It doesn't look at. It looks worse than the previous game in the series, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and that is pretty sad. So I must. I don't know what's going on with that game right now, um, but there are some actual model issues. Not so much lighting as it is just models themselves. And so, especially, I feel like Dante in that game looks the worst. I'm not sure if I'll add a picture into it later. Um, but yeah, Dante absolutely looks the worst right now. I don't know what they did to him, but he has never looked this bad. When Devil May Cry 2 does something better than you, you have to really reevaluate what you're doing. And so, although I did play the, I played the demo they released, they released a story-based demo the same day that, of the conference, so I, I played that, and the game did play really fun, um, it was a pretty simplified version though, of the Marvel 3 type of gameplay. It was pretty simplified, and I, I, I hope the game does well, but only if it turns out better than I'm expecting it to. Because right now, the game really has not impressed me much. And so I really hope that the game can turn it around soon and, you know, bring more to the table. And then Monster Hunter World. This game, I have a strange relation with this game in particular. Not the franchise, the actual game itself. Um, because I was extremely hyping myself up for a Devil May Cry 5 announcement. Like, it was an extreme, extreme build-up of hype. To be fair, to, to be fair, a lot of that is mostly my own fault. Could have been avoided. Um, but yeah, so when that game was announced, like, all hope in my life and light drained from me. And so initially, I did not like the game, because, you know, it took away, in my own mind, it took away that Devil May Cry 5. Um, but after sitting on it for a bit and looking at the trailer a bit more, uh, and a few other things that happened, I've, I've grown more to accept the game. And, to, in fact, it actually looks pretty good. I'm very interested in Monster Hunter. I've never played Monster Hunter before, um, so I am very excited to play it on the PS4. Now, I don't, I'm not sure if the game is an exclusive or not, and I'm not sure they're going to put it on the Switch. I'm pretty sure they won't, because if they were going to put it on the Switch, they probably would have put it on the N Nintendo conference. Um, but I'll, I'll still get it on, on the PS4. So, let's see. Let me resize these eyes a bit. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's, that covers my feelings on, oh, oh, I forgot that we have two other uh, Sony games to talk about. Um, so the next Sony games we have to talk about, um, we'll talk about, we're going to talk about Spider-Man first, then get on to my next game, because my next game is probably my most exciting announcement from the con entire conference, and that, um, so we're going to cover Spider-Man first. Now I'm a pretty big Spider-Man fan. I really, I really enjoy um, Spider-Man as a character, and I've really enjoyed all the movies, even the Amazing Spider-Man. I've enjoyed all of them, and so I was pretty excited to show to see the game, and the game did look really good, nice. 
Um, graphically, it looked very well. It looked like it played very well. Um, there was a bit of an over-reliance on QTEs in my eyes. Um, I don't mind QTEs like once in a while, but it was pretty constant in Spider-Man, honestly. Um, so I kind of hope that they take away some of those QTEs and give more control back to the player for those scenes. Um, but overall, it looked, it looked really nice. I'm definitely going to end up buying it. Because I also usually buy most Spider-Man games. He's like my second favorite hero. Here, strands. Okay, and so uh, Spider Man looked really nice, excited to get it. Um, shout and then the most exciting game, probably from the entire E3 week, uh, was Shadow of the Colossus Remake. I was a huge fan of that game as a kid, and to see the remake and how good it looks, super excited. Definitely gonna buy it. Now, um, I read online that they're not gonna be adding any new content to the game. Um, however, they will be updating the controls. And so the fact that they're updating the controls makes me really happy, because really, um, the controls were the only issue I had with the original game. It was a bit clunky at times and a bit tough to control. Um, but the fact that they're updating the controls gets me very, very happy for the remake. Um, and it's actually not going to be cutting any content either, because there was a lot of extra stuff you could do after the game. Um, it's nice that they're going to keep those. And then let's see, um, next up on the list... Alright, so let's talk about um, Microsoft next. Um, now Microsoft overall, I would say they probably ended up having either one of the best quote-unquote conferences, in, at least in terms of presentation, uh, because they had a good balance of talking and gaming. Uh, the beginning was a bit ridiculous though, they talked a lot about um, the Scorpio, now it's called Xbox One X, and that ga name is really, really bad for marketing. It's going to lead to so much consumer confusion. Um, and they also really showed off a they showed off a car at the beginning, and I was and me and my girlfriend were watching, and we were sitting there thinking, I don't think anyone from the entire show floor came to look at a car. Let's let's get to the games. And then as soon as they got to the games, it was just really, really good conference. Um, it, it might finally push me to get an Xbox One if a lot of these games turn out as good as they look like they're gonna be. Um, so let's hit on a few of those games right now. Uh, now, there weren't too many games that caught my attention from the um, from the conference. I'm really hitting on the ones that really stood out to me. Uh, first one being the uh, Dishonored 2 DLC. Now, I am very excited for this because I've never actually played Dishonored again. I played it once at my brother's house for like 20 minutes, but I had to leave shortly after. I've never played any of them, not because I don't want to, just because it never really happened. The opportunity never arose. I never had the right amount of money at the right time. Uh, but I've always followed the series, because I've always been really intrigued by the lore and the, the characters. And so, I'll probably end up getting Dishonored 2 now that the DLC looks really this good. Um, so the DLC is called Dishonored 2 Death of the Outsider. I'm not sure if it's a standalone DLC. I'm not sure if you need to buy Dishonored 2, um, but I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be recommended. And um, to, to be fair, with Dishonored 2, Death of the Outsider, what really intrigued me was when they said we're going to kill the Outsider, because the Outsider is almost like a god in, in the Dishonored world, so we didn't even know he could die until now. And so it's gonna be really interesting to see what they do. Are they gonna need to do some kind of special ritual? Use some kind of special spell, magic? Um, or can you just be stabbed? We don't know. And so that excites me a lot. So I can't wait for that DLC to release. Okay. Alright, this 
looks good enough to be keeping the body now. <laughs> I finish the face first, though, make sure the face looks good. Mm. Righty, so. Oh, yeah, just on to a DLC. Looking forward to it. Probably will end up buying the actual game itself now. Um, probably a little bit closer to when the DLC releases, though. That way I can just get it all in one go. Probably won't get the. Probably won't get the game until the DLC releases. And then uh, next up is Sea of Thieves. Now this game looked really good. G graphically, the game doesn't look too special. Um, it honestly has a pretty generic, almost kind of art style. It's almost, it's exactly the kind of game you would expect when you hear a cartoony pirate. It looks exactly as you would imagine it, no more, no less. So I hope that they kind of improve on they kind of make it a bit more special graphically, um, but gameplay wise though it looks very solid. Uh, me and my friend uh, saw the trailer together and me and my girlfriend saw it together and we were all very very excited for what the game was going to bring pirate wise. Me and my uh, roommate slash best friend are definitely going to be getting the game and making a pirate crew. We don't know who's a captain yet. Um, I imagine it's going to lead to a little bit of bloodshed most likely from the two of us, um, but I feel like we'll get through it. I feel like, as long as no one dies, we'll be strong for it. And the pirate, ooh, the ship name. I hope we can name our ship, that'd be a lot of fun in, with that game. Uh, but yeah, they showed off a little bit of treasure hunting, and that was really cool. Um, you had to use a compass, you had to use your map, uh, you had to use basic counting skills to count the paces, and there was no indication of where the treasure was, and so it looked like it's going to be a really nice exploration game. It looks like it's not going to hold your hand too much. And the trailer did have a um, a narrator going throughout it. And the narrator, was, the narrator was honestly probably my favorite part. Just because it was very well written. And rare, um, if, the, if the game is as funny as that narrator. And the game plays as good as it looks like it does. I still think we'll be having a really true um, revival with that studio and the spirit of the studio because ukulele was meant to be the um the revival to the rare spirit and some people would say that they hit it some people would say that they missed it and so i really hope that this sea of thieves though is going to be the one that's the unanimous yes they have returned and they are still good because uh, that studio has been stuck with um throwaway games for a long time because of microsoft so I'm glad to see that they have their own game to call their own, their own, you know, IP now. And so, let's see, next up. Alright, uh, so next up is probably, again, one of my favorite games from the, the conference. Um, and this is the Dragon Ball Fighter Z or Dragon Ball Fighters. It's made by the guy. It's made by Arc System Works. The the guys that make Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue, and I'm pretty sure it's made by the same team that makes Guilty Gear. It, it looks like it is. And um, the game looks so beautiful. Like Guilty Gear was my favorite graphical um, video game, but it looks like it might have been topped by. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, just because that game looks so good. It honestly, at points, looks better than the actual anime that, that Toei is producing right now. And so, uh, and it plays like it, people said it plays like Marvel vs. Capcom 3 mixed with Guilty Gear, and it has me so excited because those are two of my favorite fighting games of all time. And so I can't wait to play the game. Um, there's assist mechanics. That it's three v three, tag in, tag out. Super, super excited for the game. Um, definitely gonna buy that as soon as it comes out. That's de a definite pre-order. All custom work has never done me wrong before. So let's go. Let's go. And the next thing I want to talk about um, is Anthem. And this one is a bit tricky because the game looked really good like it looked 
amazing, and I hope it plays out well. However, whenever a game comes along and it looks so good, too good to be true, it usually ends up being the case where it is too good to be true. Especially with that scripted mic chat they were using, that one is also putting me a bit off to the game right now. And so I'm consciously optimistic for Anthem. I want it to be as good as it looks. I want it to play like it did at E3 because if it does, that'll be amazing. Um, but I'm definitely not gonna buy the game probably day one. I'm probably gonna wait for reviews to come out and then decide if I buy it because I don't want another Destiny on my hands or another uh, Watch Dogs. So I'm 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 gonna wait to see how it goes, but I hope. Lord above that it, that it turns out to be great. Let's see. Okay. Right. Let's get to the close. Okay, let's finish the hair, why not? Um, so that covers the Microsoft conference. Oh, a funny story. Um, this was my girlfriend's first time watching an E3 show. And it got her into it. And because of this, she watched a Sony conference. She didn't watch a Nintendo conference, sadly. Um, but I'm very happy that it got her into conference into E3. So it's a it's a good conference in my book since it did that to my girlfriend. Let's draw the ponytail. Oh, and by the way, totally forgot to mention, if you have any kind of critiques or comments on the format, um, I would love to improve it, because, you know, it's pretty fun to do for me. I love drawing, love talking, why not combine them? If you have any comments or critiques, go ahead and post them in the comment. I'll make sure to consider it, and hopefully, you know, we can keep this improving, you know, so that way I can provide anyone who stumbles upon this with better quality content. Alright, so, um, that, yeah, that covers uh, Microsoft, so next up, let's hit uh, Nintendo. Um, now, I haven't owned a Nintendo console in a long, long time. I haven't, I haven't owned a Nintendo console since the DS and GameCube, like the original DS. Um, and so I, I, I bought the Switch very recently. Uh, I got it on the day of release, actually, with Breath of the Wild, obviously. And I'm so happy I did because the Switch is amazing. I love it as a piece of hardware. And Breath of the Wild is easily one of my favorite games of all time now. And so I was super excited for the Nintendo conference. You know, I want, as I love Breath of the Wild. I still play it every single day. No worries. I'm not having any less fun than I had on day one. Uh, but I wanted to see what else they could, they could bring to the conference. Or what else they could bring to uh, the Switch. And it was a very nice conference overall. It was very short, only about 30 minutes. It was just one of the Nintendo tree houses and uh, live streams. So what they didn't have a big show floor, but you know it, it's a good size for Nintendo. It, it's very Nintendo-esque, if that makes sense. I'm sure Allo would know. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's see. What's so good? Um, so this game wasn't on the wasn't. Uh, in the live stream, but it was announced during E3. Uh, Shantae Hapjin Hero is going to be coming to the Switch, um, and I'm super excited for that. I, I actually bought Shantae on my PS4, but I just never played it that much. However, I feel like the game is a really good fit for the Switch system, and so uh, that's going to be really nice to um, play a bit of a uh, Switch. Oh, I'm not sorry. Play a bit of a uh, Shantae on the Switch because I feel like it's a very good fit for the system, you know. Let's see. A bit lower. Oh, there it is. That's weird. Okay, let's try this. Alright, so let's get to uh, Nintendo. So, um, also they announced uh, Pokemon for the Switch. Now, they didn't show anything at all. They didn't show a logo. They didn't show gameplay. 
they literally just had one of the team members at uh, HAL Laboratories say, yeah, we'll make a Nintendo for the Switch and look forward to it. Uh, they said we might not even hear of it for about an another year or so, so it's pretty far off in the development. Um, it's probably pretty early, and, and I'm not sure if they're going to stick with the same monster they used for the DS, stay with that really cartoony, almost chibi-like art style, um, or maybe they'll take advantage of the Switch and make a really nice looking Pokemon game. Um, not to imply that Chibi's not nice, but you know, a more detailed, high fidelity Pokemon game. Uh, so I'm very curious to see how that's going to play out. Let's see. Um, and then they announced Skyrim for the Switch on the actual conference, and I think this is slightly ridiculous. The fact that Skyrim was at both Nintendo conference and Sony's conference. I thought that was really ridiculous, honestly. Um, that, uh, like, a, a five-year-old game, at the very least, is at two more conferences this year. It's honestly a, a bit ridiculous at this point. Um, but, you know, it, it's a good game. I'm not I'm not gonna buy Skyrim on Switch. I, I played Skyrim once. That was enough for me. Um, but I'm sure it's gonna sell well, because Skyrim's a really big game. And then, I know this game wasn't at the Nintendo conference, it was, tech, it was at Ubisoft conference. However, I feel like it, I should put it here just for consistency almost. Because I feel like it should have been at the Nintendo conference. Um, and this is Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Um, and similar to everyone else, when I heard about the crossover, I was extremely skeptical of it. I didn't think it was going to turn out well at all. However, um, after seeing the gameplay, um, along with everyone else, I'm impressed with the game, and I'm excited to see more, and I'm probably going to end up getting it, because I need games on my baby Switch. So that's, that's what's happened to me now with Nintendo, looking for any Switch game. Uh, but still, it looks like a really solid strategy game, uh, RTS, like XCOM, so no one expected that. And I'm super excited to see how it turns out. I'm definitely getting it. Day one. And it's really weird seeing um, a, a Nintendo franchise helmed by a uh, non-Nintendo studio. It's being completely created by Ubisoft. Now, I'm sure Nintendo has say in the project, especially when it comes to the Nintendo characters like Mario. I'm sure they have a lot of say in the project, but still, it's weird to see a Nintendo game handled by a non-Nintendo entity. Especially when you saw the creative director for the game uh, crying in the E3 audience. That was very sweet. And just to show, you know, how much of an impact Nintendo has on most gamers' child childhood. And so, I cannot wait to see what they do with this game. Because I know it's going to be great. And then, let's see... Oh, um, next up is Fire Emblem Warriors. Uh, this was shown at the, at the at Nintendo conference. Um, now, full disclosure, I've never actually played a Fire Emblem game. I I watched my friend play a bit of it, but I've never actually, you know, held the controller myself and played the game. Um, however, the fact that it's a warrior game, you know, like Dynasty Warriors or anything else like that, that has me really, really um, happy for the game. Well, not happy, but it, it makes it's gonna make it easier for me to get in, so it's a bit of a relief. And so, um, I'm a huge fan of Warrior games. I've always loved the character designs in Fire Emblem. And so, I feel like this is gonna be a really great way for me to get into the franchise. Probably after I get Fire Emblem, I might, if they ever release any other Fire Emblem games on Switch, I'll probably end up getting them too. But I'm probably gonna wait for Fire Emblem first before getting anything else. redrawing the body right now because it looks a bit weird. Alrighty, I want to make Link a bit thinner because Link's not too much of a muscly guy. That's better. Um, next up is... Uh, Sonic Mania. Now, again, this wasn't shown off at the Nintendo conference, but I want to talk about Sonic Mania. Um, and I'm very excited for the game. I didn't play too much 2D Sonic as a kid, 
uh, but that pre-order trailer, uh, which I can't believe I'm saying this, the pre-order trailer really won me over to the to the game. The animation in that trailer was beautiful. It used nostalgia very well. It definitely was kind of exploiting it, but it was good, so I don't mind. Um, and the gameplay looked really solid, so I can't wait to get that game too on the Switch. It's gonna be fun. I'm probably gonna need to end up getting a new SD card. Well, not a new. I'm gonna need to get an A SD card for my Switch. That way, I can hold more games in it. Um, I'll try. I'm probably gonna try to get a pretty big one. That way, I can hold a lot of games on it without needing to worry about deleting any of it. Uh, after that, we have. Uh, Metroid, the Metroid games. Uh, they announced two Metroid games. One was on the con, one was during the conference. One was afterwards. Uh, but they they announced Metroid Samus, Metroid uh, Return of Samus, or Samus Returns, along that line. And it's a pretty much a Metroid Two remake, which makes sense because uh, they they had to send a cease and desist cease and desist 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 letter to the AM2R, which was another Metroid 2 remake that was being developed by fans, and so it makes more sense now why they cancelled that game. And then uh, Metroid Prime 4 was the other Metroid game they announced, and this one was a big surprise, um, because we haven't had a Metroid Prime game in like 10 years, I believe. And I played the first one a long time ago on GameCube, I believe. Um, but it was so long ago that I barely remember the game, but I just remember having a lot of fun with the game itself. And so, uh, Metroid Prime 4, they only they only showed a logo. They did not show any gameplay at all. Uh, but I was, wa I was watching Arlo, um, and he, I'll, I'll link the video in the description below, because I think everyone should watch it. And he was went totally crazy over the logo. He was screaming, it was great, and I'm sure it kind of sums up a lot of the intense response to uh, to that announcement, even without gameplay. And so, uh, Metroid Prime 4, um, I heard that Retro, I read, I read in a few places that Retro Studios isn't involved with Metroid Prime 4, I mean, P Metroid Prime 4, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how valid that claim is, because I haven't really read any Articles confirming it, uh, but I really hope that they're involved because um, you know they made they made the original series. They know what makes it good, hopefully. And so, if it's another studio handling it, I'm gonna be a bit cautious, but still, I'm um, most likely gonna end up getting it as long as it turns out f good to decent. Let's pull up a bit of a link reference right now. I need it for a shirt. There we go. So let's not do that. Okay, so next game up. Oh, uh, this isn't really a game, but probably my most exciting thing from the com from the from Nintendo because I love the game so much and that is the Breath of the Wild the DLC now I don't even know how many hours I put into Breath of the Wild it must be at least like 120 or 150 or something like that because I play the game so much um, I, play for, I play for like at least an hour a day even this far into the game's life and so the fact that there's going to be more to the game has me super excited. They showed off um, Trial of the Sword, which is kind of like a gauntlet run of enemies you have to go through. Um, you spawn, you first start with nothing, and then you have to work your way up the the floors um, while acquiring new gear to fight. And so that has me super excited. It reminds me of Bloody Palace from Devil May Cry, and that was like one of my favorite features in Devil May Cry Four was the Bloody Palace. It was done very well. Um, hopefully. There, there was no timer in there was no timer in uh, Trial of the Sword, so that's good to know. Better than the Bloody Palace of Devil May Cry 4. Mm, how does the elbow look here? The elbow's giving me a bit of trouble. Let me pull up some reference for that right now. 
Um, and they also showed off um, Master Mode, which is the hard mode for the video game, uh, for Breath of the Wild. Um, they even changed the loading screen for Master Mode. Originally, the loading screen was black and white, but in Master Mode, which is the hard mode, um, they changed the screen to red and black. So it definitely gives off a much more foreboding feel of the game. And so, super excited. I used that a lot, didn't I? Super excited. I'm trying to stop using that for now. Um, but overall, uh, the game is going to be... It looks like it's shaping up to be re really good. Let's delete this. Try this again. Okay. Let's see how this looks. Okay, let's try that. Oh yeah, so um, they also showed off a lot of the um, armor sets from the game. Well, a lot of the, they showed off all the new armor sets for the game. Um, they showed off Majora's Mask, which has me super excited because Majora's Mask was uh, one of my favorite Zelda games. I'm surprised that I'm surprised they didn't do anything with Ocarina at the time, considering that game is like the biggest game in the series besides Breath of the Wild. Um, but they already had the DLC costumes with the Amiibo, so I guess that's kind of enough. Um, they showed off some. They showed off an armor set from Spirit Tracks, which is a game I never really played. I didn't. I said didn't have a DS at the time. Um, but the armor itself looks really, really good. I'm very excited for. Ah, oh, use that term again. Um, <laughs> extremely anticipating uh, that armor set just because it looks really good in the Breath of the Wild engine. And then Tingle's outfit. It looks like you'd expect on Link. Ridiculous. <laughs> but I, but I know I'm probably gonna end up wearing that outfit for a little bit every now and then, just because it looks so out of place and ridiculous on Link. It's funny because you're cosplaying as Tingle, who was cosplaying as Link when he wore that outfit. And so that's really, really funny when you think about it. That's really weird. That's really weird. Um, let's see. I after that, there really isn't much else I want to talk about. Uh, there were a few miscellaneous games. Uh, for one, Kingdom Hearts 3 was nowhere at the conference at all, but they released a trailer on the same day as E3. And so... Uh, the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer though looked really, really good. Like, oh, I need this game as soon as it comes out in this world. Hopefully in my lifetime it comes out, because you never know with Tetsuya Nomura, you never know how long it's going to take with that man. Um, I hope it comes out a as soon as possible. Um, I know that there have been some rumors saying that they're targeting a 2018 release, um, but even then I, c I might doubt that they're going to hit that release window just because the guy we're dealing with. Um, but hopefully they take the time, but don't take too long. Um, there were a few other miscellaneous games thrown about the conference, but none that I'm too urged to talk about. Went to almost close. Um, oh, a few last notes I want to touch on. Um, one was uh, the Bethesda conference. Um, Bethesda had a conference. It was super short. It was like thirty to forty like 20 to 40 minutes um, and it, it was just a pre-made it was just a pre-made clip I had an amusement park theme to it so kudos on them for trying to improve presentation but it wasn't really needed for it wasn't really needed um, they didn't have a lot of show they only showed off uh, two new games they showed off Wolfenstein the new one it looks pretty cool um, I might end up getting it on sale one day. I've never really been too big a fan of shooters. Let's see, let's see. And then the other game that they announced was... Oh, what was the game? Jeez, I forgot the name of the game. What was it? Oh, well. 
I guess if I can't remember it, it's not that important. Um, but yeah, and then the stream itself was also glitchy at times because at least with the one I was watching, um, it kept reversing in time. Like it would, it would play a section, and the next section would start, and then the previous section would start again. And so uh, it looked like they were having technical issues because I heard and saw on Twitter that other people were, were reporting the issue as well. So I guess it wasn't just me. Hmm, let's see. I'm missing a lot of detail. I'm missing a lot of detail in this outfit, but it's supposed to be just a quick sketch, so that's okay. Oh, I got this though. A bit higher up, and then the other one I want to talk about is Devolver Digital. Now, Devolver Digital, they did have a quote-unquote conference. It was also a pre-made video, but it included real people, so it was a bit more acceptable than the Bethesda's. And it was kind of a deconstruction and almost mocking of E3 in general. And it, 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 it was pretty funny, honestly. I, I laughed. I think my friend watched it together. I laughed a lot. He laughed a lot. Um, and so kudos to them. I know they lost a lot of money E3, so my apologies to you guys. I, and I hope your next E3 is better. Um, you guys, Lord knows you guys um, are the real MVP, so to speak. Um, so, that covers mostly everything in E3. Um, if there's any topics I forgot to talk about, any games I forgot to talk about, uh, my apologies. Um, I only really, uh, I only really wrote down what came off the top of my head and what stood out to me in the IGN article. Um, and I hope, I hope that all of these games are going to be amazing. Because you can never have too many good games in your life, and I hope everything turns out great. Um, but, but yeah, so this was a, a new format I want to try out. Um, if you like the format, great. If you didn't, um, go ahead and just tell me you know why down below, and I can look to improve this format because I think I want to keep it. It's a very fun format for me. It's very, it's, it's a very fun format for me. I'll try to improve my speaking skills in the future, definitely. So, with that being said, now let's add a few little extra folds in the clothes, make it look a bit better. So draping right here, and a bit of compression. Oh, and I also forgot to touch on this real quick. I'm um, on the Skyrim Switch trailer. Um, they use a song from one of my favorite bands. They use Take a Walk by Passion Pit. And that made the trailer like ten times more amazing to me. It went from eh to yes. I'm still not going to buy the game. Because screw you, Todd. But, you know, it was a nice little bonus. Okay, so I'm going to go and just finish up, I'm gonna finish up a little bit more of the sketch. A little bit more detail, then we'll be done here. Uh, so we might as well talk a little bit about the future of this format. So I'm going to plan to try to make at least one of these videos a week. They're not too tough for me to make. Um, the toughest thing is making a drawing that I like. Um, the actual discussion itself though isn't too tough to do. Uh, so I'll try to do at least one of these one of these a week. Um, the, the topics are mostly probably going to be a lot about gaming. Um, just because that's, that's really a thing I'm very familiar with. Um, but it's probably going to vary a lot. There's probably going to be a lot of um, other kinds of topics. And see. We're just doing a bit more detail on the shirt, make it a bit more recognizable. Alrighty. Oh, and if you want to, I'm always going to try to do a drawing that's related to that topic. It's probably going to be a little bit, a little rare when I do a drawing totally unrelated to the topic. Because, you know, people come, hopefully, to hear the topics. Um, and so I want to give those people who listen to the topic something 
visual to go along with it, but I don't want to. I don't want to use gameplay or anything else like that because that's a. Uh, I don't want any kind of legal troubles, you know. No, let's fix this. And. Yeah, uh, what, uh, whatever conference you liked, leave it. Leave a comment down below which one you like the best. Um, all right, and I believe this drawing is done. So let's just do a real quick signing of this. Use my signature. Well, that's not right. Make a new layer for it. And also, you know, if you have any opinions on the art, you can always leave that down below. There's a lot of things to comment about when it comes to this format. Whichever one you think will be best, whichever one you want to do, whichever one you want to talk about the most, you want to leave a comment down below. Oh, well, the channel is this small, I can definitely read them all, so don't worry about that. Mm, I can do a bit of that. There we go. Alrighty, and then also I'll leave a link down to the sketch below in case you guys want to download it for anything. Um, it might be a little bit more finished, maybe not, depending on just how I feel right now. Um, but with that being said, very great first video. Love talking to whoever listened, and hope you have a wonderful day.